Hi, my name is Mike Dillard, and this is Self Made Man, the podcast for men who want to leave their mark on the world and create a legacy of honor, integrity, and achievement in every aspect of their lives. I'm glad you're here, and once again, it is time to forge your destiny. Well, it's that time of year, a time to reflect on the previous 12 months and to set our goals for the next 12 to come. Now, personally, my theme this year is balance. I want to work less and dedicate more time to personal pursuits that enrich my life. Number one on the list, I want to hit the track more often. So I've committed to competing in six Porsche races this year around the state of Texas. I want to get back into fishing, which has been one of my biggest passions in life since I was in high school, and yet I haven't really been able to do that since then, so I want to make that a priority once more as well. I want to turn fitness into an activity that I actually look forward to every day rather than having it as a to-do item on my list that's constantly in the way of something else. And finally, I want to get back into a daily habit that has paid huge dividends over the course of my career when pursued, which is reading. Now, in order to achieve balance between work and all of these personal activities, I'm going to end my day this year at 2 o'clock every afternoon. Now, in order to successfully pull that off, the hours I do work have to be truly productive. And if I've learned anything over the past year, it's that the key to productivity begins with your physiology, with your body, your energy levels, and your ability to focus. Two hours in flow are easily as productive as six hours in a low-energy, stressed-out, and scattered mental state. So to help us increase our productivity and performance this year, both physically and mentally, we are joined today by a man who's turned this subject matter into his life's passion, Mr. Dave Asprey. Now, many of you have heard of Dave through his bulletproof coffee recipe over the last couple of years, but you probably haven't heard the whole story. The story of how he weighed almost 300 pounds and how he turned his passion for hacking computers into hacking the human body to unlock its full potential. Well, today you will, and much more. Specifically, Dave is going to share three things that you can start doing today that will reduce your stress and dramatically increase your productivity levels as we roll into the new year. So without further ado, please help me welcome Dave Asprey. This week's recommended resource is a book I've been listening to on Audible called Shoe Dog, which is the story behind Phil Knight and how he built Nike. It is, without a doubt, one of the best stories I've ever heard, and has brought an incredible amount of perspective to my life and my business. So if you think you've gone through challenges, if you've questioned your potential and whether or not you've got what it takes, you have to read this book. It will absolutely change your perspective about yourself, about your business, and about everything. Uh, So once again, that is Shoe Dog by Phil Knight. Go check it out. It is awesome. Welcome back, everybody. Mike Dillard here, and I'm super excited to welcome our guest today, whom many of you are probably familiar with. You've at least heard his name and heard about his products, but uh, maybe you don't have the whole story. And so we're going to get that here today from Mr. Dave Asprey. So Dave, welcome to the show. Mike, I'm so pleased to be on. Absolutely. So I've been a fan of, of your work. I've purchased just about every product that you guys have put out through your Bulletproof brand over the last couple of years. And I've heard little tidbits of your story, and I kind of think that that, I have a feeling that's where a lot of listeners today are probably at as well. You know, uh, when you came out with Bulletproof Coffee and it basically took the internet by storm, but I have heard little snippets of your story and how you got into this whole health revolution, frankly, for yourself, and I didn't expect uh, that you were in the position you were from you know, uh, your overall health years ago. Uh, and I would love it if you would start with that and share you know, how you got into this world. Well, a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away kind of times, I was the, the first guy to sell anything over the internet. Like the very first product sold before the browser even existed was a caffeine t-shirt that said caffeine, my drug of choice, sold out of my dorm room. Unfortunately, I wore a size double extra large because I weighed 300 pounds. Holy smokes. I weigh, well, I'd like to say I weigh about 200. I I definitely lost 100 pounds of fat, but I've been putting on muscle like a madman in the last couple months. I'm actually at about 230 right now, and like I have to buy new shirts. It's kind of irritating. It did require four workouts to do that and some special supplements. So anyhow, like I I play with my body composition, uh, and I'm, I'm looking a little different these days. But anyway, I lost 100 pounds of fat for sure, and I'm somewhere around 230 right now. So... 
The problem that I had though is that I started to get brain dysfunction. So I, I've had arthritis in my knees since I was 14. I'm I still have stretch marks, haven't managed to get rid of those, even though I wrote a book about how they form that's up, up on Amazon now, like a little, like an ebook almost to like how to prevent them. And I one day uh, made $6 million at age 26. For I'm fat, my brain is like super foggy, and all of a sudden I'm a multimillionaire. Uh, I, by the way, I lost it when I was 28, so I was a multimillionaire for two years. And I, I realized that the most important investment I could ever make was in myself. And I'm I was at the company when Google was one server. They came to my company. I wasn't the CEO. I was a co-founder of, of part of the company. And they came to us. When Yahoo was, you know, 100 servers, they came to us. When Facebook was the Facebook. Like, like, so this is like how the internet as we know it was built. And I'm this uber geek, fat. <laughs> and when the brain fog started happening, I was terrified because I would sit in these meetings where I'm running strategy for a company worth $36 billion in revenue. I'm attending board meetings and I'm not 30 years old yet. And I couldn't remember what was happening sometimes. And I would like reach for something in my brain that I knew should be there and it wasn't there. So I got into smart drugs. I was literally like, I wouldn't hire myself right now. Something's wrong. My doctor could help me. So I started taking smart drugs from Europe, what we today we would call nootropics. Uh, pretty much every one of them I've tried and some of them I've taken for 20 years. I ended up getting my brain back and I ended up spending pretty much four hours a night studying human biology in order to hack it the same way we were hacking the internet, hacking scalability of servers and all this. The internet has this, this weird situation where you have to make your stuff work, but it's connected to all these things that you don't know about. Like when, when we're connecting over Skype today, there's thousands of devices between you and me and you and I can't see those devices yet somehow we make it work and we can fix problems it's the same thing in our body you don't have to know everything you just have to know if I make a tweak here I can get access to the system and I can change it so I took that approach to my body I spent at this point a, a little over a million dollars in 15 years working on hacking myself and I've raised my intelligence very substantially in fact I, I run a, a private a very high-end brain training facility in Seattle called 40 Years of Zen, where I train like Hollywood celebrities and CEOs, and where I, I spend a substantial amount of time myself wired into a computer to make my brain do what advanced Zen monks do. And I take cognitive enhancers, I manufacture them. Brain octane oil and Bulletproof Coffee is a cognitive enhancer. And I, one day, about six years ago, I sat down, I was a VP at a publicly traded internet company uh, with stock options and a, and a nice salary, and I said, no one told me what to do when I was 16 years old and I was fat and tired and had pimples and stretch marks and ADD and the symptoms of Asperger's and all this crap. And if someone had just pulled me aside and said, Dave, here's what you need to know, it would have reduced the amount of effort in my life so dramatically. It would have reduced the amount of suffering, frankly, and struggle uh, that I felt an obligation to just write this stuff down. And the Bulletproof Executive, uh, my blog, uh, was started with the intent that maybe five people like me would read it and it would radically change their life. And that was a huge win for me. I didn't need to start a new company. I, I've been an advisor to companies. I've worked at Sand Hill Road venture capital firms. Like I've had a, a phenomenal career that I'm so grateful for. Uh, and I, I started Bulletproof because I could help a few people. And when it, it started to just snowball, I left a very secure job in Silicon Valley, took a risk. I, I'm you know, the main support for my family. And I uh, decided that I was going to disrupt big food because it was big industrial food that led to a lot of the biological and cognitive and metabolic processes I had. And five years later, we reach about 10 million people a month across Bulletproof channels. Uh, the podcast is number one ranked in health and fitness with about 50 million downloads. And I have a microphone that I, I use to tell people this really simple message, which is that you have control of your own biology. You always did. Nothing happens accidentally. Uh, that food craving you had, it's your fault. That tiredness you're feeling, it's your fault. But you don't know what you did. So here's where to look first. Because when you get this right, you have way more energy, way more focus, way more willpower, and you're actually a nicer person than you think you are. It's just about fixing your hardware and then optimizing your software. And I've made my life's work first as a hobby and then as a nonprofit running anti-aging research group. And now just as my day job, I'm a professional biohacker and I have a great time. And I know because I run into people in airports and at conferences who say things like, Dave, you know, Bulletproof 
uh, saved my life. It changed my life. It, it made me a better person. I lost all this weight. I'm nice to the people around me. And it, the list goes on and on. I'm, I'm just profoundly grateful for all that because my goal was to help five people. So could you describe the, the core tenets? If, if they don't know what the bulletproof philosophy is, could you, could you go through that real quick? Absolutely. The bulletproof philosophy is that the most important thing you can do is stop doing the things that make you weak and then do the things that make you strong. <laughs> and a lot of times that comes down to, in fact, it always comes down to controlling the environment around you because everything your body does is in response to the world around you. You might think it's another way, but that's actually a cognitive evolutionary step that we've made. A good example of this is if you lean over and touch a hot stove accidentally, your body will immediately pull your hand away and then you'll tell yourself, good thing I pulled my hand away from that hot stove. But in reality, you didn't make that decision to pull your hand away. Some other process made a decision to pull your hand away. So it turns out your body is responding to the amount of air in the room. It's responding to the temperature, the light, the kind of food you put into your body. It's responding to your emotional and psychological stress. So those drive the things that are tangible to you, but a lot, oftentimes they're invisible. And today, by taking control of the environment around you, you can totally change how your body responds. So suddenly you're losing weight. Suddenly you're sleeping better. Suddenly you have more focus and energy. You have less stress. And the entire set of knowledge in Bulletproof is what are the changes that you can make that give you the most benefits in the least amount of time? And once you achieve those, you can do things like reprogram the thoughts in your head and all. And I, I call this biohacking, which is the art and science of changing the environment around you so your body will do what you want. That, that's all it really is. I just teach people how to do that. So could you give us some more, some more examples of what you see? Well, and, and I'll use myself as a, as a personal story or a guinea pig here, right? I've been athletic my entire life to mountain biking state championships I've paid attention to what I eat. I live across the street from Whole Foods. I try to only eat organic, you know, foods, the highest quality meats I can find. And yet I went and had blood work done a year ago. I'm not overweight at probably 10 pounds more than my ideal. But if you were to look at me from the outside, I'm in good shape. Uh, I had some blood work done and my uh, inflammatory markers were like nine out of 10. And, uh -huh. and, and my doctor's like in 10 years, you're, you know, or less five to 10 years, you're on track to become type two diabetic. And I'm like, what in the world are you talking about? I try not to eat sugar. Uh, if I do, it's in the form of, you know, really complex carbs. I don't eat ice cream or candy or any of that stuff. I don't drink soda. So I'm like, what in the world is going on here? Did you figure it out? Not yet. <laughs> it's, it, you know, it was like, okay, well, Pay even more attention to what you're eating. You know, eat, eat, make sure you, even, you eat even less of that other stuff. And from a, a practicality standpoint, you then get down into like, okay, well, now I've got to do, start doing my own food prep, right? And, uh, and that just is time consuming in and of itself. So I have not figured out uh, the solution. Well, this is one of those things where I, I had a similar thing happen. When I was about 28, I went to an anti aging doctor. And said, like, I, something's wrong. I don't know what it is, um, but I feel like I've been poisoned. And they ran a bunch of different profiles on me, similar things. This is going back to, you know, the late, late 90s uh, before as many people did this kind of stuff. And I've been tracking my data uh, ever since. And he said, here you go, Dave. You're at high risk for stroke and heart disease. I'm like, I'm going to die like I'm old and I'm in my mid-20s. Like, what's going up here? And... Or what's going on here? And, and it, was, it was a bit of a wake-up call for me, similar to you. And what you have going on right now is something I see in huge numbers of especially successful men because we have been raised to believe that if you exercise really hard, that it makes you a good person. You struggle, you sweat, you, you carve out time from your day. And if you do that, you can probably work off some of the bad food you eat. But we also just believe like this is good. When I was at my heaviest, I actually worked out six days a week, an hour and a half a day because I had sworn that I was going to lose the weight. I'd had three knee surgeries before I was 23. And I'm like, I'm never going back to that. And I got to the point where I could max out every machine at the 24 hour fitness down the road from my house. 
every single one of the machines and I still weighed 300 pounds and it wasn't muscle, it was fat. I could bench press my thin friends. And as I learned more about inflammatory markers and as I saw these results in my blood, I was like, wait a minute, if you have a large amount of stress, whether it's what I had when I lost my $6 million, that'll cause a little bit of stress. Uh, going through a, a breakup or a divorce, moving to a new town, having a car accident, having a chronic infection, having a job stress where you think you might lose your job or your company's in trouble or, or uh, whatever, whatever pressures are on you. Or maybe you just have chronic anxiety. All of those things are stressors and so is exercise. So exercise is a stressor that you can apply every single day and then it turns out recovery is the problem. So guys like you and me, our biggest issue is actually high effectiveness, high efficiency recovery, not stimulation. You're running your podcast, you're exercising really hard, you're doing all these things right and you're like, I'm going to push, push, push. And the answer is, well, you better be able to stop and recover because our, we're biologically wired. Push, recover, push, recover. So in your case, you got inflammation the same way I did. And I track my inflammation markers and they stay low now. And the Bulletproof Diet is actually designed to control inflammation first and foremost. And one of the biggest things you can do is you can do something called cyclical ketosis. And the reason Bulletproof Coffee is so powerful is that it's a gateway to ketosis that doesn't require willpower and effort. Ketosis is when your body stops burning carbs and starts burning fat as primary fuel. And the, the neurons in your brain get really happy because they want ketones more than sugar. So all of a sudden, you get this amazing focus. If listeners have ever tried fasting for a couple of days, uh, you feel like crap for a little while. And then all of a sudden, you wake up and you're like, wow, I feel better. I have this amazing light energy. Well, that energy is because your brain got more electrons from ketones because ketones are anti-inflammatory. What you do with Bulletproof Coffee is you take the mold-free coffee beans that I make because mold inhibits your cellular energy production. And then you add brain octane oil, which directly raises ketones as if you're fasting. In fact, it raises ketones between four and five times better than fasting. So all of a sudden, within a half hour of drinking your Bulletproof Coffee, if you're like a, a typical person I'm describing, then you suddenly you feel this like lifting of a fog and everything you do cognitively feels easier. Well, it's inflammation based and it's energy based. You get better energy, get less inflammation. And what's going on with you is uh, with your your blood sugar issue is that there's there's something going on and eating less carbs may not be the issue. Getting more sleep is probably the issue. And I'm seeing an epidemic right now, one that I actually have some some new stuff I'm working on that will help with it. But as we've switched over the last uh, four or five years to LED light bulbs, LED light bulbs have a ton of blue light in them. And blue light signals to our brain uh, and it's absorbed through our skin and through our eyes basically to be less effective in using sugar. So I am firmly convinced that light is a nutrient or light is a drug just like food. Throughout all of history, we had sunlight or we had firelight with lots of infrared and no blue light at night. When you or I stare at our phone or we turn on the LED lights in our kitchen or bathroom, we're now getting five times more of this biologically relevant signal than we did before. So I would tell you install dimmer switches and get rid of your LED lights. Uh, install the software on your phone and your computer that make them dim and go to bed a little earlier and make sure your room is blacked out at night and your blood sugar issues will probably resolve. This is how changing the environment around you changes your body directly. It's just we suck at understanding long, uh, long-term long event correlation. If, if you smack yourself in the face, it hurts right away, so it's easy to see. But if you smack yourself in the face and it hurt four months later, you would never know why your face hurt. Right? It's that long lag time that matters. But the biochemistry around light exposure and blood sugar, it, the studies are out there. No one's talking about them. And people are continuing to basically install junk lighting in their houses. My new book called Headstrong that, that publishes in April, it's on Amazon right now, I actually talk about this and a bunch of other things because for you, if you can make the energy producing parts of your cells called mitochondria, if you can make them perform better, they will pull that sugar out of your blood and turn it into electrons that you can use to think, uh, to move, to feel, to meditate, uh, to create good podcasts, to do whatever you want to do. Like it's free energy and right now it's bottled up in your blood because something's off in your environment. Yeah, it's interesting. And, um, you know, I, I, I don't know if this is the case or not, but I thought it was really interesting over the last year, uh, you know, one of the major updates, Apple came out with their whole night shift, 
mm-hmm. you know, app on uh, on their phone and on their iPad that takes the blue light out of the screen at, at, in the evening. And I'm gonna assume I'm gonna assume that you are one of the primary, if not the primary, uh, inspiration for for them to add that functionality. I pushed them very hard. I actually did like a public shaming thing on Facebook. I don't, I'm not going to take credit for that. There's probably some engineers there who follow Bulletproof. I'd be surprised if they didn't. If they're listening to this, hey, guys, thank you for doing that. I'm also about to launch a post on the Bulletproof site. It turns out I think they got about a third of the way there. And I, I make a, a screen filter that goes on top of it, like a screen protector, that filters out the most harmful spectrum of blue light. And... That most harmful spectrum is, is just a narrow band of blue. That's the one that suppresses melatonin the most. And when you, when you run the software from Apple that's just built into the operating system, it helps, but it doesn't, it doesn't take all of that out. So there's, it turns out now in the latest update, there's a couple other tweaks that you can do. So I, I'm in the process of writing that up for people now uh, so that if they uh, follow the Bulletproof website, I'll email that info to them. And uh, basically what you can do is you can make the screen even more amber at night so that when you're laying in bed, if you want to read like I do, you're not even getting a little bit of the bad spectrum. And it, it turns out if you look at blue light is like corn syrup uh, of lighting. Red light is the opposite of blue. So you wouldn't want to have only corn syrup or sugar in your diet, you want to have a mix of things. So by adding red in and taking out even more blue than Apple does right now, you can do some cool things. So I'm hopeful that with this new software tweak that people can make, uh, it requires about six steps. It's in the accessibility settings that you can actually make it so that when you go to bed at night, you'll have zero effect on your sleep from your iPhone. The other thing that you and everyone listening just has to do when you turn out the lights, your phone needs to be in airplane mode because constantly broadcasting the electromagnetic frequencies, basically the wireless uh, transmitter in there, it does affect your sleep. It affects your cellular energy production. So if you're sleeping with your phone turned on in your bed or next to your bed, you are seriously asking for health problems 10 years from now. It's just not a good plan. And there's abundant evidence of that. Mm, That's good to know. I've always kind of been like on the fence about that. It's like, yeah, I'm sure it's, you know, better for you, but is it really causing issues? But it sounds like you've got, you've got quite a bit of data on it. Yeah, unfortunately it is. Uh, In fact, I made a decision uh, a few years ago that I'm just not going to hold my phone in my front pocket the way I used to right next to uh, the crown jewels. They're one of the most mitochondrial dense part of, of the body. The more mitochondria, these more of these power plants you have, the more EMFs and light affect them. So your brain, your heart, and basically your eyes and reproductive organs have the biggest energy requirement. So you want to keep your phones away from those, those parts of you. And that means I carry my phone next to my right femur, which is uh, the, the bone in the upper part of your leg. So I had a, a very high resolution uh, bone density scan done. I do all sorts of strange Uh, medical diagnostics just to validate that what I'm doing works and to see if I'm making mistakes. Like maybe having this much butter is bad for you. By the way, after eight years of extreme high butter, no, my liver fat is extremely low. It's probably lower than yours. And like all sorts of variables are, are shockingly good. In fact, my insulin sensitivity is as good as is possible to get on the scores, even though I was pre-diabetic when I was in my late twenties and I'm in my mid forties now. And this comes from food and environment, not from heavy exercise. So What I found out on my femur was interesting. My right femur, which is my dominant leg that should have more bone density because it bears a little bit more weight, it's 10% less dense than my left femur in the spot where I hold my cell phone. Like, (laughs) your cell phone affects your bone density. I have extremely high bone density throughout my body because of my supplementation regimen because I do, uh, when I do exercise, I I do high-intensity, heavy, load-bearing exercise, and I have a machine that that flexes my bones to trigger bone density. I'm not in risk of breaking my femur uh, unless I'm in a really horrible accident, but I can tell you there is no explanation on earth for the difference between those two bone densities other than the fact that my phone is always right there. It's scary. You have that next to your head at night, your risk of cancer will go up. And people may get mad when they hear that. (laughs) There are thousands of studies out there like that. It's inconvenient. And if you're an entrepreneur listening to this and you wanna make the next billion dollars We are going to have to replace most of the Wi-Fi infrastructure on the planet with Wi-Fi that's biologically compatible with our cellular biology. 
this will happen in your lifetime if you live as long as I think I'm going to live. So you might as well get started on that because that is a trillion dollar infrastructure spend globally and it hasn't been cracked yet. Like it's probably the biggest single opportunity I can think of. You bring up an interesting point. My fear is from a marketer's perspective that people are not going to appreciate the effects that Wi-Fi is having on them because it is so slow. You know, okay, I've got cancer, but it, it must have come from something else, you know, 20 years later, right? And so what would elicit the kind of money and investment and effort that would be required to do that? Well, the first thing is an admission by academic scientists that this is a problem. There are so many papers out there now, and we're realizing things in quantum biology about the fact that our mitochondria are actually room temperature semiconductors. Uh, this is a proven fact. It has been documented by bioengineers, some of whom have, have graced the stage at the Bulletproof Conference. We know this, but when people respond to a post like that online, you'll hear a good number of people say, that is not the case. So what you find in, in science is that whenever someone comes out with a, a new theory that violates the very, uh, the, the very tenets that, that the previous theory held is first they're called a, a quack or a charlatan uh, and crazy. And then about 20 years later, sometimes 50 years later, depending on where in history you're looking, uh, suddenly it's like, oh, what that person said was obvious. But what usually, take, it, what usually it takes is the death of the previous generation. Uh, literally, the old scientists who believed one thing and fought for it and, and shut down anyone who said something else, they all die. So we have this very slow evolutionary thing. What's different now, though, is that with social media and the ability for people thinking differently to find each other and collaborate and do research, is it's phenomenal. So we're seeing a rapid exponential acceleration of change. Uh, probably best uh, best described by Peter Diamandis uh, in his book uh, Bold or Abundance. He actually has two books. So what we're seeing is it's okay if a big group of people disagree with you. You only need to find enough people who are interested. I can tell you right now, if you kickstarted a wireless router that was biologically compatible, and by the way, that would be a, an engineering feat because you would need devices that worked with it. So um, let's just assume you could do that you'd have a $5 million Kickstarter tomorrow, right? So that's, that's interesting. And I believe that's probably achievable. One of the reasons I know this, Mike, and we're kind of, we can talk about whatever you want, but to go down this path, years ago when I worked on Sand Hill Road at, uh, at Trinity Ventures, one of the big VCs there who ended up investing in Bulletproof, I had dinner at a, or sorry, not dinner, I had coffee at a coffee shop in Mountain View. And it was with the guy who held the patent for the first 802.11b, the first wireless protocol ever made, the guy who invented it. And he showed me on his laptop. He said, Dave, I'm using these million-dollar uh, radio uh, signal analyzers, the ones we use to detect whether our networking equipment is working. But I turned it around and I looked at the human body. And look at all this data that's coming off the body. You can actually diagnose what's happening with someone just based on the radio frequency fields they emit. It's just that they're so small. No one's ever listened to them. This was like 15 years ago. Like this science is real. So it's just a question of showing enough people the science is real. And this is how disruption happens. I'm in my fourth disruption of my career where we disrupted the telecoms with the data center business that held Google's first servers. We disrupted Microsoft with virtual machines at VMware and all these things. And you go down these disruptions. And what happens is in the course of three to five years, the people who are dominant suddenly aren't dominant. You look at what Google did to Yellow Pages. It doesn't take that much time. So the speed of disruption is accelerating. I am absolutely convinced that in our lifetime this will happen. So for entrepreneurs who want to get started now, get a couple data points that are, that are solid, that are academically backed. There are lots of papers out there. And then you go to the next point, make a prototype, and you start talking about it. And when the conversation happens, when you ignite that discussion, when the demand is there, the world has to change to meet demand. And, and that's what I've done with Bulletproof. We, we changed demand for grass-fed butter. In fact, there were global shortages of grass-fed butter thanks to Bulletproof Coffee. And that changes what farmers do. They put more grassland into production. They stopped growing corn and soy. And it actually helped the soil. When people demand less wireless equipment because, like me, they put Ethernet cables back in their house because they know it's better for their children, 
that's going to drive the people who make the routers to say, all right, let's actually pay attention to this. Maybe people aren't whining exactly the same way that Apple addressed the problem of too much blue light coming out of their devices. The, the point here is we can engineer our environment to be whatever we want it to be in a way that no one throughout history has ever been able to do. And what we do now is we engineer it unconsciously. What I want people to do, especially people listening to this, is choose the things in your environment around you that make you strongest and remove the things that make you weak. You don't have to do it perfectly. You just want to do it better than you're doing it today because that doesn't take any work. It's a one-time investment in attention and time, and then your body will automatically respond to the environment around you without you having to think about it anymore. Right? That's a big thing versus I'm going to apply effort and willpower every single day to being a better person. We're, we have been brainwashed into doing the things that make us stronger more and more, but what we should actually do is stop doing the things that make you weak first, and then if you still need to, do the things that make you strong. It's a whole different amount of stress and a whole different amount of willpower. Part of the bulletproof teaching there is that willpower has been shown in some studies, but not all studies, to be a limited thing, that willpower is something you can tap into, but even the person with the most willpower on earth, at the end of the day, there is a limit. And that limit is biological. It, it's energy-based. You run out of energy. When that happens, you stop making good decisions. And what if you just shaped your environment so that you had to make less decisions every day? You'd have more energy. You'd have more ability to do important things. What are the top couple of things that, that you've done over the years of throughout all of your experimentation that have just made the biggest impact and that you'll do forever? The number one impact was my, uh, my first big book, The Bulletproof Diet. And there's a, something that I'd like to offer uh, for, uh, for people listening to this today. And I, I'm not trying to sell you anything. I'm not going to collect your email address. I'm just going to give it to you because it matters. <laughs> and it's called the Bulletproof Diet Roadmap. Go to the Bulletproof website, uh, blog.bulletproof.com, and just search for a roadmap. This is the skeleton of the Bulletproof Diet on a one-page infographic you can print out and put on your fridge. And all it says is these are the foods that have the most energy, the most nutrients, and the least things that are likely to mess with you. And then there's a swath of foods, some of which you probably dearly love, that really mess with some people, but not everyone. Those are called suspect foods. And there's a set of foods that no one should eat unless they're gonna die of starvation, and those are called kryptonite foods. If you do that and you follow, there's some other stuff on there, for instance, around timing of meals and all, if you try that out for a little while, you'll see profound differences. So for me, the number one thing I've done is I'm on the Bulletproof Diet and I figured out in the suspect foods which suspect foods are guilty for me. I know what foods are biologically compatible with me and I do not eat foods that mess with my head. Before, I felt like it was random. Some days I'm tired, some days I'm cranky, some days I have food cravings, uh, some days I'm full of energy and it's probably just because I'm weak. No, it's because my body's responding to what I put in it. So there's a, a system to this that people can learn relatively easily, and that's the focus of the book. So that's one thing I'm not going to ever stop doing is I'm going to eat the foods that are compatible with my biology, including cyclical ketosis brought about by brain octane. That has radically changed my abilities. I stopped taking modafinil, which is a smart drug that I took every day for eight years. That's uh, the drug that Limitless, the movie, was based on. I cannot measure a difference in my brain on or off that drug as long as I'm doing the other supplements uh, and the brain octane oil and the bulletproof coffee and things like that. My response time, my reaction time, uh, seven different measures of cognitive function, they're all the same on or off the most powerful smart drug when my biology has everything it wants and it doesn't have the things that make it weak. So a question on that. You, you brought up a great point. You know, one one thing has come clear to me over the, over the years of, of looking at this topic is that uh, not everybody is built the same way, right? And I don't know if you want to categorize people by blood type or genetics, or maybe it's microbiome based. You tell me. But uh, you know, uh, my one of my best friends here in Austin is diehard paleo, and it totally changed his life, and and he absolutely loves it. And when I try it, I don't really feel you know better or different or stronger or or whatever it may be. I respond really well to to more of a vegetarian diet. So. How do you figure out what you're supposed to be eating? Well, there's a, a kind of structured recommendation in the, the Bulletproof Diet. And what it comes down to is, whoever you are, your plate should mostly be covered with vegetables, like green vegetables, not the starchy vegetables. And 
it should probably have a moderate amount of high quality grass fed or wild caught protein, but it's moderate. And there are lots of people who are vegetarians who are bulletproof. And what they're doing is they're adding ghee, which is a, a clarified grass fed butter. And I do manufacture a, a really good ghee uh, from 100% grass fed uh, uh, butter. So like quick plug there, that's on bulletproof.com. But if you're eating say a vegan diet where you're not getting those saturated fats, your body is made out of saturated fats. Your testosterone is made out of saturated fat. You, you kind of need that stuff and you don't get stable cell membranes if you're doing a, a vegan thing. But on a vegetarian thing, you may just require less protein. And I would imagine that if you threw some eggs in or if you had a piece of grass fed steak once a week, it's not paleo, right? It's primarily vegetables, but it's a high fat vegetable diet and it's high in undamaged healthy fats. And this is something that drives me crazy in modern nutritional discussions. It's so easy to say, well, there's three categories of food. There's protein, there's fats, and there's carbs. And in fact, this is kind of the thinking behind uh, products like, like Soylent. It's like, well, okay, if you need these three things, that means you need 30 grams of protein. Therefore, let's throw some protein in there. It doesn't matter if it's soy or, or dairy protein or whatever. It's just protein. But if you think about it, if I, I walked up to you, Mike, tomorrow, and, and I had these two bowls, and I said, look, this bowl has 30 grams of spider venom. It's protein. This bowl has 30 grams of scrambled eggs. It's protein. Which one are you going to eat? You know very well you're going to eat the eggs, and you're going to say no to the spider venom. But if you think like in these macronutrient things, well, I've got to have X amount of protein, you stop thinking, what does that protein do to me? And one of the big shifts that I've made, and something that might be helpful for you, is I use the Bulletproof Upgraded Collagen in my Bulletproof Coffee. So collagen's a kind of protein that you don't get unless you're a really strict paleo guy who makes bone broth and you eat like all the innards of the animal. So collagen is the structural protein for your skin, your hair, your bones, and it's much less inflammatory because it has lower inflammatory amino acids. So when people say fat's good or fat's bad, it doesn't mean anything. When people say carbs are good or carbs are bad, are we talking sweet potatoes? Or are we talking corn syrup with a nice glyphosate residue? Like they're just different foods. And just because they're both in the category of carbs, it's actually just, it's poorly structured thinking to even, even look at it from a protein perspective like that. So for you as, a, as someone who feels better on a vegetarian diet, Make sure you get enough undamaged fats, including saturated fats, on your vegetarian diet. I would encourage you to include animal protein from grass-fed, ethically treated animals that supported soil agriculture the way I do. And you'll probably feel better if you have a little steak once a week and you have fish a couple times a week and you have some eggs. But you don't need to load up on protein. A lot of paleo dieters get inflammation because they're overtraining and because they're eating too much protein or because they're burning the crap out of their protein and they're damaging their fats. Um, a big part of the recommendations in the Bulletproof Diet is the way you cook your food is a pretty important variable. A deep fried piece of grass fed steak is a very different piece of food to a gently cooked piece of grass fed steak. They have different effects on your gut biome, on your mitochondria, on your liver, and on your inflammation markers. Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, I want to, I know we're, we're getting close on our, our time here, but I wanted to make sure that you went over what Bulletproof Coffee actually is for those who haven't tried it yet, because that's kind of like your gateway drug um, sure. to, this, to this whole uh, ecosystem. And it's, you know, it's been interesting to watch it get hijacked, meaning, uh, you know, I've seen little coffee shops that now sell quote unquote butter coffee, right? Because everybody all of a sudden wants to put butter in their coffee. But there's more to it than that, right? There is. And, and part of my goal in, in starting this national conversation about uh, Bulletproof Coffee and about the coffee industry at all is to disclose a couple things. And here's why I'm happy. Every time I see someone selling butter coffee, I am stoked because it means I won. <laughs> here's where I won. <laughs> when you put milk in coffee, the milk protein sticks to the polyphenol antioxidants in the coffee and they become unavailable to you. We need polyphenols. In fact, Headstrong, my new book, I talk a lot about how many polyphenols you need. And even if you're eating a lot of veggies, you're only getting half of what your body could use. These are antioxidants that actually help your body with light signaling that feed the, the healthy bacteria in your gut. Coffee is the number one source of polyphenols. But if you put milk in it, you don't get the benefits. So you're taking away the goodness. My whole philosophy, stop doing the things that make you weak. 
mixing milk protein into your coffee makes you weak. Mixing butter into your coffee allows the goodness of the coffee to be absorbed by your body. So every time a coffee shop does butter and coffee instead of milk, I'm like, yes, the world is a better place. People benefited. I didn't get paid. It's okay. My mission is actually to change the world so that no one will go through what I went through when I was younger. And if I'd have been able to buy generic butter coffee, even though it wouldn't do what Bulletproof Coffee does, it's still a step up from what people are doing today. But what Bulletproof Coffee is, three things. Butter instead of milk is definitely in there. It's a special kind of coffee, which is something I manufacture. It's something that I manufactured as my first product because... I got tired of drinking coffee and then getting sugar cravings two hours later and needing another cup of coffee and sort of doing the yo-yo coffee thing that we all know. That happens largely because coffee that we drink everywhere, but mostly in the US, has mold toxins in it. This is such a big problem that most countries around the world have put in government regulations to control the level of mold toxin that's in coffee. These mold toxins are neurotoxins and they're mitochondrial toxins that inhibit your body's ability to make energy in your cells. I don't make that stuff up. I have 900 studies about this on the website and there's 35 that are coffee specific. It turns out because Japan, China, and all of Europe have legal limits on the amount of mold toxin that's in coffee. When coffee is too moldy to sell in those markets, they send it to the US because we have no standards for mold in our coffee. That means we're drinking the moldiest coffee. I don't like how I feel when I drink moldy coffee. I get sore joints and a headache and I get sugar cravings. So I went to Guatemala and now Colombia and put in new infrastructure to change the way we process green coffee. And I do lab testing for 27 different toxins in coffee to have the very highest standards of anywhere on the planet for coffee purity. And what you get is coffee, instead of you drink it and you crash, you drink it and you, you land, you feel like yourself again. So special coffee beans that don't have the jitter and the crash in them, uh, which is called Bulletproof Upgraded Coffee Beans. There's three different roast profiles and there's a decaf that's also mold free. And then the final ingredient is not coconut oil. It turns out coconut oil doesn't raise ketones in your body any more than just not eating for eight hours. So coconut is a very, very mild ketone booster. Brain octane raises ketones about four to five times more than coconut oil in laboratory studies from UC San Diego. So what we're doing there is we're adding this careful extract of coconut oil. It's about 5% of the fat found in coconut. We get rid of the other 95%, give it to other companies so they can sell it as MCT oil. And then we take this precious part and we make only that, we triple distill it in the US, made only from coconuts so no orangutans die. Most MCT oil kills orangutans because it comes from palm oil. And then uh, you put that in your coffee. It doesn't make it taste like a pina colada. It doesn't change the flavor at all. But when you drink it, it raises your ketones even if you had some carbs. So all of a sudden you get that mental clarity that's associated with fasting. And when your ketones go up, it suppresses your hunger hormone called ghrelin and it raises your fullness hormone called CCK. So what you do is you drink this Bulletproof coffee with special coffee beans from Bulletproof, brain octane oil, grass of butter, and then you don't care about food usually for four to six hours. People are astounded the first time they have it. Like, I didn't want the muffin at 10 a.m. Like, it wasn't that I had the willpower to say no. It was that someone put it in front of me, and I'm like, I'm too full to eat that. Why would I put food in my body right now? Like, that's how I am all the time. It's almost lunchtime for me. I don't even want lunch. I could skip lunch. It wouldn't matter. So this kind of resilience that comes from Bulletproof coffee comes the first day you have it. That's the full recipe. What's your feedback or knowledge when it comes to coffee and, and acidification? And I know if I go to, if I'm traveling, I go to Starbucks. If I get just a big, you know, grande coffee black, nothing in it, I might put a drop of stevia or two in it. I feel unbelievably acidic afterward. What, what does acidic feel like to you? You know, breath is, breath is different. I, I, that's a really good question. I've never had to, had to describe it before. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know. I just don't <laughs> feel, I don't feel great. Maybe, maybe, uh, see, I'm having brain fog today. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'll send you some coffee. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's why I'm asking, is sure. there any truth to that? Well, yes. No. It, it's not fair to, to pick on Starbucks. There Starbucks at any one time has about $800 million of coffee in inventory from all over the planet. Mold in coffee is a known thing. It's not just in Starbucks. It's in most coffee because the coffee industry basically uses something called washed coffee. And at least for good coffee, they do that. But washing means the coffee sits for a couple days in unfiltered water, open to the air, and whatever uh, mold and yeast 
and bacteria are present, they just proliferate. And then they wash off the coffee, but the toxins made by that fermentation are still present. And since it's illegal to sell some coffee in Japan or China, of course it's going to end up here. So you, you can't pick on any one coffee company. It, it's not fair. But here's the way acid works in coffee. And I would propose that what you're feeling is actually from the mold and fermentation toxins in the coffee, not from coffee acid. Because here's what coffee acid really is. And this is why low acid coffee is actually BS. When you drink coffee, coffee has fruit acids in it, like a lime. A lime is an alkalizing food, but a lime is an acidic food when you measure it with a, a pH meter. So the way your body metabolizes these, uh, these fruit acids that are present in coffee is that at first they cause a short rise in acidity which is correlated with alertness and awareness, and it's something you want in the morning. And then as your body metabolizes the fruit acids, they become alkaline. So what you get is a perfect thing. You wanted a spike in acidity, which raises your energy levels, combined with ongoing alkalinity, which increases your endurance levels. And so when people say this coffee is acid or not acid, they're usually talking about things like tannins and all the fruit acids like that, and whether the coffee has those or not, if it doesn't have those, it doesn't make you feel as alert and it doesn't give you the endurance. So it's normal to have those in coffee, but coffee itself is not an acidifying food. That is a misnomer. However, if you did have mold toxins in coffee, those can, can drive acidification of your tissues through their changes in your mitochondrial function, having to do with carbon dioxide. So I, I think it may have to do with where did the beans in that cup of coffee come from? How are they processed? One thing everyone can do right now, even if you never come to the Bulletproof website and you don't buy Bulletproof coffee, is when you buy your coffee, go to a coffee place that has single estate coffee. What that means is the coffee came from just one plantation. And what that means is that you're still flipping a coin. I find 70, 80% of the time if I drink single estate coffee, I don't feel good. I'm pretty sensitive to this stuff. But at least 20, 30% of the time, you might feel good, and you're probably going to reduce the odds of there being the bad stuff in your coffee. But if you're drinking a blend like you get at a mass market chain, uh, you don't really know what you're getting. Uh, and so I would say avoid blends and go for single estate, and you're still playing a little bit of roulette, but you're increasing the odds substantially. By the way, that was in my second blog post ever written. Uh, was that advice. So this is something I've, I've been talking about for many years. Very and cool. Unfor unfortunately, what, what most coffee has done is not the same as the Bulletproof process where we installed new infrastructure to make it happen. Right, right. So tell us what's next. You've got you know your next big project coming out, uh, the book Headstrong. What is that about? And, and tell us more. For 15 years, I've been looking at what makes me stronger and weaker and how I was able to recover and then become way more than I was ever in my life in terms of, of capabilities and strength and focus and all. The single underlying uniting element is mitochondria, these power plants or these batteries in our cells. Some new information has come out in the last five years about how they work that is groundbreaking and they are eminently hackable. So if you imagine like an engine in a car, I know that this is, we'll call it pre-Tesla, <laughs> but with, with if you go to a performance mechanic, a race car mechanic, like, oh yeah, we can change this. We can increase the efficiency of that. We can allow more fuel into the system. We can allow more air into the system. And all of a sudden you can take a car with 300 horsepower and it comes out with 400 horsepower. Now we have the knowledge to do that on a cellular level so that every day, Every cell in your body that makes energy can make energy more efficiently and more effectively, and that energy bubbles up throughout your system. It just so happens the part of you with the most power consumption is your brain. So if you want to actually be, get headstrong, as in have more power and energy in your head, by hacking the energy production in your cells, you can do that. And that's what this book tells you how to do. And it, it's not that hard. It's usually a few lifestyle changes, some nutritional things, and the difference, though, in just your ability to just have this mental energy is, is profound. Uh, so I'm, I'm as excited about this book as, as I've ever been. The knowledge in this book is part of why I'm even leaner right now than I, than I have been from just the Bulletproof Diet. But most effectively, this mental energy to just go and go and go all day long and to always bring it, no matter what life brings at you, just to know you've got it. I didn't have that when I was 16 or 25, and I have it now. And that's what's in this book. That's awesome. Where can people go to get a copy? Right now, it's up for pre-order on Amazon. I'm always grateful for pre-orders. 
And if you pre-order it now, you can save that email and, and pretty soon I'll have the ability to send me a receipt and I'll send you a bunch of free bonuses and things like that. I, I just want people to have this knowledge because I struggled. I, I've been very successful in my career and the entire time it was like I was driving with the accelerator all the way to the floor and I couldn't get any more speed uh, and I was wasting a lot of energy and, and I, I just wish I had known this stuff then because I would have I would have done even more. That's awesome. And Dave, thank you so much for the time today. This was awesome. I've been looking, you know, looking forward to this interview for months and uh, it's good to finally have you on the show and I'm very excited about Headstrong and this is uh, the perfect time for people you know, to, to come up with whatever reason they need to, to make changes on their daily habits. We're starting a new year uh, here in the next couple of weeks. And um, I know I've got some changes that I'm going to make and some habits that I'm going to put in place. And, and this will be at the heart of it. So thank you so much. Thanks a lot, Mike. Have an awesome day. Thank you, guys. And uh, thanks so much. We'll see you guys next week. Take care. Take care.